Can you hear me, Sean? I can, yeah. Guess we're the only ones here so far. Oh, well, maybe. There we go. You can hear me now? I can hear you. Excellent. Well, there's Andre, it's a Talos only cloud, uh, our group. <laughs> I hope we got the right day. <laughs> they, said, yeah. they said September 3rd. Third, Thursday, uh, first Thursday of each month. At 11, uh, I'm sorry, 8 a.m. USA Pacific, which is 11 a.m. here, which is one minute from now. It doesn't mean that anyone else will come to this meeting. Or just a plan. Yeah, I suppose they could have heard uh, who was <laughs> going to be talking and said, "Oh no, I'm not showing up." <laughs> Sorry, they we'll might be very our, punctual. Yeah, we'll do our thing in the echo chamber if we have to, man. Uh, well, somebody's recording it anyway. <laughs> oh, that, that's a great point. No hotkey for mute in the web version of Zoom? The web version of Zoom is severely limited. Hmm. Not even, no gallery view either. Hello, Marga. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Good, good. Fine, I just, I had never signed up for Zoom before. I had always been using it like as an anonymous user. So yeah. I just signed up <laughs> yeah, because same this here. is only for signed up people. Gotcha. <laughs> I got worried, and uh, <laughs> but eventually just tried to sign up, and no, it was there. <laughs> is this your first time here, Marga? I don't know uh, if if this is usual to wait, or we we got the right day and time, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so oh, yeah, I, like people are showing up. I have no idea who's like okay. the host here. <laughs> we don't know either. None of us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but we're being recorded. So someone, <laughs> someone did something. So. <laughs> okay, so why we wait, I'm going to try and share my screen. Uh, just to like check if it works because I use Zoom inside a container and I don't know how it behaves. So, sure. <laughs> okay. This could be interesting. Um. <laughs> okay. I will see a black screen. Oh, a black screen? Yeah. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay. The you aspect do... ratio is a little off, but uh, it's a little tall for what it is, but it's readable. Huh. Okay. Uh, that may just be me. This... Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I can see the. Yeah, I think screen. you're good. I think it looks, looks good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can stop sharing until we get whoever is supposed to be the host here. <laughs> and I might as well do the same thing here myself. Hey guys, I'm 
Mm. I'm the host. <laughs> oh, cool. Morning. Aha. Hey. Yeah. Is that, uh, so is is that displaying properly or is that still off center? No, it seems fine. Okay. Sorry, somebody right. said they were um, the host. Yeah, this is uh, Ricardo. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, we have about uh, two items on the agenda today. So uh, I'm going to uh, send the meeting notes on or put the meeting notes on the chat. Let me see, give me a second here. So that you guys, you all at yourself as an attendee. There you go. And yeah, we have two items today and one is the uh, Talos and the other item is uh, Flatcart. So two projects that are in a similar uh, space or, or they're kind of similar, uh, but uh, you know, glad to have you here and you know, talk about how different they are or how similar they are. So take it away. This is ta Talos, right? So. Sure. All right. Well, let me get the share up again here. All right. So I am Sean McCord from Psychor Systems. We uh, are a boutique consultancy in a number of different specialized areas, including Kubernetes. Um, so to get started, talk a little bit more about one of the dreams of uh, Kubernetes. That is to abstract away the machine. Uh, abstracting a lot in Kubernetes, but at least for the purposes of Talos, we're looking at Whenever we run Kubernetes, all of our operations, our focus, our attention as users should be at the cluster level and not the machine level. We shouldn't care about the discrete resources on which the cluster is built. That's where Talos comes in. So Talos is written in Go, in fact, about 96% in Go. Uh, it's designed to run autonomously as part of a dynamic cluster adapting and updating over time using coordinated API calls between cluster members, monitoring points, admins, both human and machine, and to be secure by default and come batteries included. Overall, TELUS represents many years of knowledge accumulation across a wide variety of backgrounds from contributors, who have been running Kubernetes in production since the 1.0 release and perhaps a little before. It is, of course, suitable for cloud use, but it's also being built with a keen targeting for the bare metal user. A number of design features have guided the development of Talos based on our experiences, and we continue to refine these in order to create the easiest, most manageable container operating system in the container ecosystem. Hey, Sean? Uh, yes. Uh, do you mind uh, put in the slice and percent uh, mode? Uh, uh, yeah, we tried that before and it, uh, it ends up cutting off the slides. It, it has something to do, I think, with the fact that I'm running Zoom out of a web browser, okay, no worries. Um, which no unfortunately worries. I have to yeah. do because I'm on Wayland and Wayland has the screen share problem. <laughs> so low we have. No worries. Uh, it, it, there may be a way to maximize it within the window. I don't know, but uh, that might help okay. a little bit better. Yep. Okay. I think you uh, can try so, the, to close the left sidebar with the slide list. Or shrink uh, it. That might make the slide bigger. Yeah. Um, however, one does that. I think I just got rid of the menu somehow. Ah, there we go. You. Nope, that's ruler. You. 
Anybody know? I don't know, but don't no, don't worry too much about it. So yeah, too, too yeah. much. Just, yeah. All right. Just wanna, don't want to take up uh, the time. So. <laughs> sure. Okay. So uh, Talos is highly focused specifically to run Kubernetes in container-oriented workloads. Therefore, we wanted to avoid using a generic general purpose OS. This allows us to limit the attack service. We have a tiny set of tools and almost no listening services. We have no common packages and we install no administrative tools to exploit. We keep a small footprint. The entire OS fits in less than 100 megabytes, including the kernel. A highly focused role, which allows us to secure the kernel. We conform to the KSPP, the kernel self-protection project guidelines. Uh, we are always using the latest stable kernel version. And by default, uh, we allow no loadable modules uh, in the system. All our code is easily auditable in one place and under a single license, the Mozilla Public License version 2. Everything in the OS is fully tested with a battery of unit and integration tests covering everything from internal components to the Kubernetes deployment and the lifecycle management. We have a true read-only image based on a read-only squash FS image with a predefined allow list for specific writable segments uh, within the running system. And even then, those writable segments are only to RAM. You can never modify the base image itself. Talos is designed to offer no unstructured access. Everything comes through the API, even for internal components. They run, they talk to each other through the API. We have no cheating in the system at any level. We have no shell, we have no SSH. We include a cluster-wide PKI with automatically rotating certs and short-lived ephemeral certs wherever possible. We have a common RBAC system for uh, various levels of uh, access control. And we have aud auditability built throughout the system. We are designed to minimize the maintenance overhead at every level. Obviously, of course, the API-based lifecycle controls help that a lot, uh, offering such things as deployment, reboot, control, reset or wiping the node and upgrades all via API. But we also offer metrics, monitoring, debugging, and a number of common Unix-like Unix utilities to uh, be able to diagnose and work with any problems that might arise. Kubernetes deployment in Talos is handled by a small manifest requiring only a bare minimum of required customizations to get bootstrapped. Talos is also a certified Kubernetes installer. In fact, the OS is the installer. Talos is built uh, with aggressive automation of Kubernetes in mind. We have structured customization for all Kubernetes common control uh, components. And we manage upgrades for both the kubelet and the control plane. We have managed recovery in the unlikely event that we lose control plane pieces. We have an API by which you can recover any piece of the control plane, including the API server. The, the deployment templates we use are robust, high availability templates with best practices as defaults. We've tried to eliminate the arcane in Talos. We try to use a simplified API built on gRPC with every interface defined clearly in protopuff. This allows us to maximize the visibility and portability of our APIs, as well as maintaining constant interface contracts. We've tried to abstract away the Unix primitives. For instance, instead of PS, we have a process list. Instead of LS, we have list files. Instead of cat, we have read. We still have aliases to handle from the CLI tool, uh, the Unix style commands, but in general, we've tried to make this accessible across the board to as many people as possible with no discrete knowledge of Unix background. 
we have tried to main secure and sane, uh, maintain secure and sane defaults with a minimal input requirement from user supplied and user generated data. We strive to have no barriers. We have a layered API, which allows us to compose and assemble higher order controllers at both the internal component level, the external uh, node level, the cluster oriented control level, and the Kubernetes oriented API level. At all levels, we offer APIs for interfacing and command and control for higher level applications. Since all of this is built on gRPC, these controls are language agnostic, and it allows users and SREs, DevOps people, to build their own business logic controllers as workloads within the Kubernetes cluster in whatever programming environment they are best familiar with. So the Talos design features that we have, no general purpose OS, no unstructured access, no maintenance overhead, no hands Kubernetes, no arcane, no barriers. You could say Talos says no, so that you can say yes. So what's next? So we're working on a whole lot of other projects. This is just a small list of things that are interesting. Uh, the newest of these is COSY. It's a common operating system interface. It's designed to be a standard OS, OS agnostic interface to provide structure and security between the kernel and the user space. Yes. In progress. It's going to be a, probably a year till they sign a contract just because they're a big organization, which is fine. Steve, I think... Uh, I think master has laid off 55% of their workforce. Steve. <laughs> Sorry, somebody missed to um, <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah. Couldn't quite tell if those were questions or... Talking else. Um, I wasn't really sure if it was a question either. So. <laughs> uh, sorry again. I wasn't really sure whether it was a question or not. So. He, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah likewise. Yeah. Okay. At any rate, uh, do feel free to stop me. I, I don't have much more here, but uh, stop me if you do have any questions. We'll have time at the end. Uh, so we're building an EP, EPPF system, uh, which allows, which will allow Talos to be an invented OS based on reactive changes to, um, to system updates. So when we add a network link, when we add a block device, remove block device, etc., uh, we can quickly and uh, atomically react at the Talos level to these changes. We're building CAPI providers for a number of cloud providers and bare metal. Uh, in fact, bare metal, we have an entire management system being built somewhat along the lines of DRP or Matchbox, but a lot more and a lot more specific, uh, specifically catered to Kubernetes. So our better bare metal management system, Argus, will allow us to handle the complete life cycle of nodes from inventory management and node provisioning, pixie booting and node classes, and it'll quickly allow you to build an entire cluster and help you manage it over time. All, of course, from APIs. Sidero is even a CAPI provider for bare metal, which ultimately, in the best case, will allow you to bootstrap the cluster from a laptop or any other computer. So enough talk. Let's see what does Talos actually look like in action. So, let's switch this over to, how am I doing on time, by the way? Looks like, yeah, it looks like all right. Doing good. We got another 15. 10 minutes or so, 15 maybe. Uh, okay. Here we are, share screen. Give me my Tmux. All right. So, we have, Starting out with an empty DigitalOcean uh, uh, range. The only thing at this point I've provided is a generic load balancer and uh, a space from which we can build our system. 
So the first thing we're going to do is to generate our Talos config. That's not it. Uh, bear with me here. <laughs> Shouldn't have done this in Tmux. Uh, let's see. doing here is generating all of the PKI infrastructure and the configuration for Talos itself. Uh, can everyone see this? Is it large enough? Yep, it looks good Great. to me. Okay, good. So among these, we're really only going to use the control plane and join uh, nodes. And it is something of a legacy. It allows you to automatically bootstrap uh, the system, but I'd like to break that out and uh, do that manually via the API. So we have our config. Now we just need to create some droplets, some VMs on which to run this. We'll start with the control plane nodes. And just for the sake of the demo and my wallet, we will just start one worker node. After a little while, we should be able to get the IP addresses from the control plane nodes. And then add those to our Talos config. Now that we have our Talos config set up, uh, I should explain what we're doing. We're setting the endpoints for the Talos API, and we're setting each of those to talk to the master control plane nodes. And just for reasonable defaults, we'll set, oh, I'm really good at copy and paste, you see. Set up the node, the default node list. So, tell CTL, we should be able to now see service list of the first of our set. So we see the Talos, at least this control plane node, up and running. We can look at any other simply by telling it which node to look at. Copy and paste again. Let's try this again. We have other services running uh, on the other nodes. So the first thing we want to do is to go ahead and bootstrap the Kubernetes cluster. We're going to use just purely the defaults. And we can then Uh, CTL log boot cube. And this will take a little while as it bootstraps the cluster. So in the time being, we'll look at some of the other things that we have. 
So we have list for LS. We can look across the system, find files. We can read any arbitrary file. Uh, let's see if there we are. YouTube is still running. Uh, of note. We're still waiting for Bootcube, of course. Uh, uh, a question. Uh, the yes. management, can, management can happen anywhere, right? It can be on your laptop or can be on. Yes. Uh, in this case, I'm doing the management from my workstation uh, here at home. And the, we're working on machines up in DigitalOcean. Got it. Can so while, uh, yeah, sorry, can, go ahead. Yeah, um, can some of the, I guess the boot, bootstrap and it's already automated, right? So like, uh, um, that's correct. Yep. What All we're doing is waiting for that to finish. Does, does it allow you to manage a fleet of servers or, or is it individually? Uh, yes. You, so the bootstrap only occurs on a single server but it will bootstrap a high availability control plane from that. Mm -hmm. So it starts with one and then it'll build the rest of the control plane after that one is up and running. And Talos handles that automatically. The way it determines which nodes to use is based on the configurations that we applied to those VMs. So for instance, we had the control plane config and we had join config. Any node which was created with the control plane config will be uh, used as a control plane after the bootstrap. Any that are joined as a, are created with a join config will be created as worker nodes. Got it. So that was back with our, uh, just with the droplet create, we specified the user data as being one of those two files to say which type of node is created when. Does it work with uh, any cloud provider or does it just work with uh, DigitalOcean? Yes, it should work with all cloud all the major cloud providers, including Packet, uh, AWS, GCP, Azure, DigitalOcean. Uh, Andrew, let me know if I'm missing any, but- uh, I think this but is the yes, major it, cloud providers, yeah. Yep. Uh, Cool. All right. Any other questions before we uh, see if we're up yet? Okay, we are up. So Bootcube, as we see, has finished. So we should be able to grab our Kubernetes config. which has now been pulled into the local directory here. And then we'll lose, since I use kconfig or kconf here locally, I'm gonna load it into my uh, kconf database. And we should be able to get nodes, finally. And we see all our control plane nodes, the three of them. Uh, not all of them are quite finished coming up. Uh, we just have two control plane modes at the moment, uh, but the CP0 will eventually become a master as well. Uh, and then we have the one worker node. So at this point, we can run, of course, any workloads we wish, and we have a fully functional control plane, high availability control plane. All right, and that is pretty much the demo. I'll be, uh, I'm happy to open for questions. 
So does, uh, yeah, I have another question. Uh, does it manage the life cycle of Kubernetes or um, for Kubernetes upgrades? And maybe yes. You want to upgrade the nodes? Yeah, so the kubelet is, uh, is bound, is presently bound to a default of the Talos version that's installed. So we, when we upgrade the Talos nodes, it will also upgrade the uh, the kubelet that's bound to that. That is also independently controllable by the Talos config. So if you want to bind a particular version, you can uh, by modifying the config of the system. Uh, uh, likewise, each of the control plane uh, elements are controllable by the config. So uh, I shouldn't say each. Uh, we currently just have, um, so I shouldn't say Currently, either. So there, there are different levels. We're in a little bit of flux. So presently, if you were to install a 0 0.6, which is our current stable release uh, version, the control plane is actually self-hosted and self-managed. So there's no automatic updating of the control plane components. You can edit those manually. In our next versions, we will have that managed. We'll, we'll actually be backing off from BootCube entirely, been running uh, all of the control plane components from Talos directly. And at that point, we'll be able to structurally control the versions of each of the control plane components. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, can you also, because I mean, some people might have some applications running in Kubernetes. Is, uh, mm -hmm. Is there any plan to maybe do some sort of health check on some of those things when, when they get upgraded? Uh, yeah, so I should mention also, of course, that we have currently a pretty early stage, but it's fully functional upgrade controller for Talos. So ultimately we're building in hooks on that so that we can have uh, clean exits, Clean, uh, clean drains for all of the nodes. So as it happens right now, the Kubernetes upgrade controller for Talos, or the Talos upgrade controller for Kubernetes that we have will properly drain the node, wait for any hooks that are already set up by the pods to confirm draining of that node, and then upgrade, one, uh, upgrade the nodes one at a time. So that is automated. It will hook in to the existing Kubernetes existing drain uh, hooks, so uh, drain clearing hooks, and uh, and upgrade those one at a time. We're looking for some for building some more advanced controls in that. So we'd like, for instance, to have uh, a plugin system, some some add-ons available to Talos itself, and for those, we'll be using event hooks internal to Talos to be able to signal when we can perform the upgrades on indi any individual nodes. Cool. Thank you for the, yeah, so it, the answer is uh, very comprehensive. There's some, so anybody else has any questions? I don't want to be the one asking all the questions. Yeah, please. This is Eric. I just had a question about some of the, um, I guess, um, networking projects. Sorry, I might get in the background. <laughs> I was just wondering if you, if you wanted to use something else, because I think you guys are in this example, we're using Flannel, but if you wanted to use something like Cilium, would that be possible? Yep, absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, we normally, sorry, Andrew, did you want to answer that? Okay, it's, it's split over, sorry. Uh, yes, we absolutely support Cilium. In fact, Many of us use Cilium as the default. Uh, it is just a line in the default config. Uh, let me see if I can show that to you. Uh, back to share the TMUX session. Uh, the so. May not be in the default config. Yeah, I don't think it is. It's an it's an extra manifest, or it's a um, 
yeah, it's a manifest field for um, yeah. the network. But yeah, it's it's easily uh, it, it's on the it's on the Talos Dev website. But it is a key that you can add in the cluster config, which allows you to specify any network available, any URL for additional manifests. Um, so you set the CNI to blank, and then you can use uh, whatever you want, whether it be Cilium or Calico or Danum or any of the available uh, CNIs. And to be clear, that'll probably change a little bit in the longer term. The reason it's it's like that now is essentially forced upon us because of Bootcube, right? So as right. we move away from Bootcube, we'll probably actually move towards Cilium as our default, I would imagine. I mean, I think we all pretty much <laughs> never use flannel anyway. So uh, right. that's not, you know, for our normal. Uh, Especially not me, since flannel does not support IPv6 at all. <laughs> Uh, uh, which is a good feature I should mention. Talos is IPv6 clean. You can run a, a pure IPv6 system for any of those who care. And dual stack for that matter. All right, any more questions? I think we're running a little over on time at this point, but happy to answer any more. And one last question: uh, uh, Are there any plans uh, for uh, making this uh, or applying for a CNCF project, for, or being uh, part of the ecosystem of the CNCF projects? I could I could try to answer that one, Sean. If, sure. Uh, so I think early on um, we did reach out. Uh, I think there was some questions on whether or not accepting an operating system. I mean, something entirely new, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, accepting an operating system into CNCF was new at the time. Uh, we are a little bit of, you know, as you can tell, we're unique. So it's, it's, you know, the line is fuzzy. Um, I think in the long run, we would like to, uh, we don't have any immediate plans. It's just figuring out, uh, what can we contribute to CNCF? And one of the places I think that we could is with this Cozy project, which is something that I'd love to work on with other similar operating systems and uh, figure out how we can get this into the CNCF um, as a project similar to how ContainerD is a container runtime interface. We want to provide an interface for interacting with the operating system. Um, but yeah, to be determined. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, the TOC is pretty open about different kinds of projects. Uh, especially, we have Sandbox now, and some projects that may not necessarily uh, fit the usual criteria. Uh, for example, uh, the CNCF just accepted into Sandbox uh, K3S, which is right. a Kubernetes distribution. So or a Kubernetes uh, flavor. So yeah, so uh, and, and I think the CNCF wants the sandbox to be kind of like a sort of a, a place where projects can develop. Uh, but I, I see that Talos is, you know, pretty advanced already. So that may not be the best fit. So, you know, it's up to you, uh, the, the Talos team, you know, to decide what, what the best one is. Yeah, it's a great suggestion. We certainly will look into it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. That was a very uh, complete and thorough presentation. Uh, so I think the next item on the agenda that we have is a flat car. Uh, as yes. I, as so, I understand. Um, um, sorry. They didn't mean to cut you off, but as I understand, it's also another operating system. It's also based on CoreOS, and but it's more advanced than that. So, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. Is is that working? Can you see my slides? Yes. All right. Awesome. 
So yeah, so I'll give a brief introduction to Flatcar and uh, uh, we don't have a demo prepared, but uh, <laughs> I guess uh, as it's based on CoreOS and it's not such a, uh, I don't know, a <laughs> special thing, maybe it's not necessary to have a demo. So Flatcar is uh, developed by Kimfolk. So first, who is Kimfolk? Kimfolk is a company that exists since 2015, so uh, we've been around for five years. Uh, we do a lot of things related to Linux, con containers, security, and we do open source engineering uh, with many different clients. Uh, we have a couple of products, uh, Flatcar, uh, which is the one that we are here to talk about today, is a Linux distro derived from CoreOS. And we also have a Kubernetes distro called Locomotive. And on top of these two products, we also do other consulting development like uh, Rocket and GoBPF were developed by, by Kimfolk engineers. Uh, so uh, what is a container Linux? This is pretty basic and I guess many of you know this already. These are the bases where that CoreOS was built upon. So container Linux means that it's a minimal distribution that only has what's needed for running containers on top of it. So it doesn't have everything that a general purpose distribution has. It only has like the minimum base. So there's less software to manage. There's a reduced attack surface area. Of course, still, it's not. Marga, we're, still seeing, we're, we're still seeing the first slide, I think. This <laughs> is so sorry. This is some stupid bug that my Zoom has. Uh, I'll try again. Uh, if this doesn't work, maybe Tilo, you can share the slides for me. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, I don't know. This happened already. I think my 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 Zoom setup that is super paranoid. <laughs> doesn't like it and uh, it, it sometimes stops redrawing the screen or something. Let's see. Does it show what is a container Linux now? Uh, it's starting to show. So now uh, it's black. Uh, it's a blank screen or black. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a shot. Let me, let me, let me try it. All Maybe right. I should stop being so paranoid. <laughs> Whatever works for you guys. <laughs> well, not Zoom. <laughs> How is it that this is like the CNCF thing and it's not using a free product? And CNCF doesn't have any video conferencing products yet. So yeah, um, okay. No, no, it's not a cloud native <laughs> product, but we could we would be using Shitsi. All right, folks. Do you see something? Do you see yes. a second slide? Yeah, I was in slide four already. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, yeah, That's I cool. assumed That's it would we work. And here we go. That's the container Linux. Okay, so container Linux, it means that uh, we have a reduced attack area, surface area. Of course, it's not as small as Talos, but uh, it's much smaller than a typical uh, uh, general purpose distribution. Uh, it, the file system is immutable, particularly the, the slash user uh, part of the file system is immutable. So that means that there's also less attack surface there. Uh, Etsy is still mutable. So configurations are still possible, but uh, it reduces the amount of, of bugs and security threats. And it has automated updates. So whenever there's a new version, it just gets applied and uh, works. And it rolls back automatically if it fails to boot. So like if the machine boots and tries to boot and fails, it, it gets automatically rolled back. Next. All right, so we mentioned this already, but just so that it's super clear, um, Flatcar is based on CoreOS, which itself is based on Chrome OS, which is based on Gentoo. So we have like all of this history but right now we are going on our own. So Chorus doesn't exist anymore. It reached its end of life. And while before we were tracking Chorus and everything it did, now we are uh, going on 
on our own, uh, developing our own new features and so on. Next. Uh, if you don't know where the name flat car comes from, it comes from a train metaphor, uh, or maybe not metaphor, a uh, simile. Uh, it's uh, the kind of train that carries containers. So it's, that's why it's a flat car container Linux. Next. All right, so how is Flatcar structured? It has four channels. So CoreOS had three channels, alpha, beta, and stable, and we keep those. And we also have an experimental channel or labs channel where we try out things and maybe we decide they are a good idea or maybe not. Um, this alpha, beta, and stable channels, we we introduce the new changes in alpha, and after we are happy with those changes, they get promoted to beta, and once uh, they've been in beta long enough that we think it's stable, then they get promoted to stable. Uh, currently, the version in stable is still the based on the last CoreOS version, but alpha and beta are completely new and include a lot of new things that are not available, were not available in that last CoreOS version. Um, we have images available in all major cloud providers and some minor cloud providers as well. And uh, they are also publicly available to download. And we have images for a lot of different type of machines. And we have a public update server that anybody running Flatcar can use to get updates to the latest version. And uh, that's, uh, there's more on that on the next slide. So the Kinfolk update server, uh, it's a completely open source project. Uh, it's a code name Nebraska. And it, we are running one community instance that can be used by anybody run, running Flatcar and also uh, people that want to have more control and want to run their own version can run it uh, on-prem or hosted by us. And this uh, update service allows uh, operators to decide when and how they update their machines. So if you don't want all of them to update at the same time, you can set a lot of different knobs on how you want this to happen. And it also gives you monitoring and visibility with what's happening inside the cluster, what, whether an update fail in many machines or not. Uh, next slide. Okay, so what's our current status? Uh, we have a team at Kim Folk that is dedicated to this project and we are keeping it alive. We have build and test infrastructure, a lot of uh, integration tests that make sure that it runs correctly in many different cloud providers. And uh, a lot of that is thanks to Packet. We have sponsored infrastructure by Packet, which helps us a lot. Um, we have all channels maintained completely independent from CoreOS. And we have support infrastructure. We, we have already a bunch of large enterprise customers with a few thousand hosts. So it's, uh, it has been growing. There's a graph coming up in a couple of slides and, and we are happy that a lot of people are adopting Flatcar. And yeah, as I mentioned, it's integrated into lots of cloud platforms and Kubernetes distros. Uh, so in the next slide, uh, we have a bunch of logos of supported platforms. Uh, we are working on the cluster API integration. It should be ready in the near future. We are also working in integration with Rancher, but um, we, so we care not only about getting integrated as a base OS on the different platforms, but also about being integrated into, into things like, like Rancher or Kubernetes, like integrating with the whole ecosystem. And the next slide we have, uh, pretty graph, although without numbers. And basically this shows that when CoreOS uh, reached end of life or, uh, or a little bit before CoreOS reached end of life, a lot of people decided to migrate to Flatcar and this has kept going up. 
So it's it's nice that these people that migrated to Flatcar uh, didn't then migrate away from it. They they were still happy uh, with the results. And yeah, and we see this this constant increase in adoption uh, as time passes. All right, so plans for the future. We are working on publishing a public roadmap that will be maintained in the open. Uh, a lot of the work that we have been doing in the past few months uh, has been updating the CoreOS, uh, this, the last CoreOS version to uh, newer versions. So uh, we have updates to the kernel, to systemd, and a lot more packages coming up. So in the current beta, we have kernel 5.4 and systemd 2.4.5, and, and then once all of that is in stable, we plan to keep it updating that. Um, and this is this is a lot of work because we were working from like the basis of CoreOS and, and CoreOS kind of stopped doing updates for a long time. So there's a lot of packages to update there. But the goal is to basically reach a point where everything is up to date to the latest versions. And, um, but then in the last point in this slide, the LTS release, some people realized that they actually like the fact, they, they liked the fact that for the past year or so, CoreOS had been making very few updates. They actually like uh, an OS that changes less, more than they like being on the bleeding edge. So we are working uh, on, releasing an LTS version, which will not change so much. So it will be supported for 18 months. And then after that, people can migrate to the next version, but it won't be changing all the time. How the stable, uh, li like the stable version, the stable version will keep changing um, as, as uh, it should. <laughs> And yeah, so that's basically it. We have one more slide. Um, but yeah, basically uh, we are proud to be continuing the legacy of CoreOS. CoreOS uh, doesn't exist, but the spirit lives on in Flatcar. And we also, uh, the locomotive, our Kubernetes distribution is kind of like the the legacy of, of Tectonic, which was the, the chorus Kubernetes distribution. Yeah, and that's it uh, for the presentation. And hopefully you have some questions. Yeah, I have uh, questions. So uh, not 100% familiar or super familiar with, with how chorus was uh, uh, managed but uh, do you plan to have also an api based type of management or do you have that already or? it depends on how you look at it right so that's um hi by the way i'm, I'm kilo uh, uh one of the directors of engineering at finfog and um, my team owns that uh, so the um, we're not quite taking the direction that Talos is taking right um, so one of the approaches of, of CoreOS was um, that uh, the operating system layer to your cluster, which either runs containers or runs Kubernetes, which run, runs containers, um, is kind of just a piece of boring infrastructure. Like you, you don't want to handle it too much. You want to uh, have it self-updating um, and maybe make a noise if something's wrong, but um, it shouldn't be too exciting for you, right? So, and that's the... That's the philosophy that Chorus drove. Um, you do most of your configuration at provisioning time. Um, so we, we use, uh, just like Chorus, we use Ignition for that. Um, there is a, uh, a certain amount of compatibility to cloud, uh, to, to, uh, cloud in it as well. So you can do either or. Um, and you have minimal changes at, um, at reboot time, and that's about it. Um, most of the uh, operating system remains immutable. So if you want to change anything, you re redeploy. Um, that's for, for major changes. Um, the operating system doesn't have any uh, package management. You're not installing software on, on Flatcar because you run containers, right? Um, so in order to upgrade, you just 
you know, uh, do this AB position flipping thing, um, your uh, update service on Flatcar, um, post the update server, which is either um, the public instance that we host or your own Nebraska instance that you host and um, writes the update to the second partition and then either does the reboot depending on its configuration or signals a uh, upper level that it's now time to reboot. So it, it kind of tries to be unexciting in the, in the whole lifecycle sense. And that's the, that's the, the core approach that we're, that we're continuing with that kind of yeah, I got it. So yeah, I, I was I was kind of curious. I mean, some of the the operating systems are basically moving towards uh, this API based uh, approach. Um, the other project that I uh, familiar or sort of familiar is Model Rocket, and they're also doing something with APIs. But uh, I think it's just ultimately is what the philosophy is on the with the project, right? And and how they want so to, or what the users what the users really want, right? And and that's, you know how great. they if I think the, closest thing, profile. Mm -hmm. the, the closest thing to an API, API we have is um, the configuration and provisioning time. Um, other than that, we just don't want to be in the way. Um, you would basically solve everything else with, um, with containers. Got it. Anybody else has any other questions? This is Eric. I, I did have one question, and I'm sorry if this. Um, may have already been answered, but um, th I believe there's still Fedora Chorus, and I, I remember seeing the announcement that with Flatcar it was going to be a seamless, um, you know, transition, whereas with Fedora, there might have been a little bit more of a, I guess, a bump. I was just wondering if you guys could have uh, shed a little bit more light as to what the difference is between, you know, Fedora Chorus and Flatcar. Sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, there was, I had a slide about this, and then I removed it because I thought, like, okay, Chorus now has been end of life for, like, so many months that, uh, talking about the update is not relevant anymore, but I guess I was wrong. So uh, updating from CoreOS to Flatcar uh, is a, a very, very <laughs> simple thing. You just change the server uh, that you're using for the updates, and then you get the update to Flatcar. And so the update, it's just handled by, by the OS, like just another update. And you, you could have like your machine that is running CoreOS and then gets the update payload from the Flatcar server. And when it reboots, it's running Flatcar. And that's it. So you basically just need to change the server that you get the update from and that's it. And um, so I guess the main difference between Fedora CoreOS and Flatcar is that we are a drop-in replacement. Exactly, it, it works exactly the same way CoreOS worked. Whereas in Fedora CoreOS, they went a different way and you basically would need to completely redeploy. And a lot of things have changed. So like you would need to adapt your setup to run on Fedora CoreOS. The principles of being a container Linux are the same, but it's not the same setup. So things change. Gotcha, thank you. Um, and then I did see a recent announcement about eBPF support, I think. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure, we, we use eBPF uh, a lot. So we, we have a bunch of tools that we developed. And so we ensure that uh, things work, like it's possible and easy to use eBPF in Flatcar. Uh, it's not like very uh, special changes that we are doing. We are just basically enabling things in the kernel that are there to be used. And we are just providing containers, uh, container images with BPF tools that you can run on top of Flatcar so that you can use BPF on Flatcar. And so if you run um, a Kubernetes distribution on Flatcar, you can use the BPF uh, tools that we wrote or the kubectl trace uh, that other people wrote uh, directly without having to do anything special because it just works out of the box. Uh, so there's this um, this uh, BPF based tool that we are suit of suit of tools that we've been developing, um, and it's actually a pity that Alban, who was in this meeting earlier, left. Um, 
because he's the he's the director driving that team. Um, and uh, so the 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 tool set is called Inspector Gadget, and it allows you um, on the Kubernetes level to gain insight into what your what your server is doing, and it uses um, uh, it uses eBPF for that. Um, so Flatcar will need some integration work and some testing work, um, and that's what Marga was mentioning. And this is mainly about making sure that um, everything works um, from the, from scratch and seamlessly, and users uh, can just go and use tools like um, Inspector Badget, uh, Gadget or the uh, BCC um, tool suite that is around and without uh, jumping through any, uh, through any loops. All right. Uh, any more questions? So yeah, I think it, the my last question is uh, uh, the same that I that I asked the Talos team is uh, are there any plans uh, for making this uh, CNCF uh, project and uh, or applying for one of the the stages in the CNCF. Tilo, I think this question is for you. I I'm, don't know I'm the answer to this. Sorry for, sorry for staying quiet. I'm thinking hard <laughs> to say. So um, our CEO, um, Chris Cool. Sorry, I don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, right? So, no, like, no, no, no. It, it's a very good question. It's just it, it deserves a very good answer. Yeah. Um, so we didn't fully investigate options yet. It sure is a um, an interesting direction to explore. Um, I would. If, if he'd be present, I'd, put, uh, I'd actually um, uh, forward this question to our CEO, Chris Kuhl. He's, um, I think, one of the first CNCF ambassadors. So there is very strong interest in um, working with the CNCF, uh, but we don't have any concrete plans or anything um, to announce at this point in time. Yeah, got it. Yeah, so I think the CNCF is always open, you know, for, for new projects. So whenever the project maintainers decide to apply, then I think it, yeah, it, it's not, it, it, they, they'd be happy to have the project or, you know, whenever they feel like they're ready, right? So. Any other last questions? Once, twice. Well, I, I want to thank uh, the Talos team, and I want to thank the Flatcar team uh, for both of your presentations. And yeah, and uh, and uh, we also have a, a Sig Runtime Slack channel and mailing list. And any other topics that you want to discuss, or any questions about these projects, or any other projects that are related to Sig Runtime feel free to send them that way. So yeah, thank you very much. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Bye.